It's Independence Day. Okay, it's not the 4th of July, but we are talking about independence of your fingers. And believe me, when your fingers have independence from each other, when they can work independently, you have real freedom. Let's talk about this for just a moment. What do we mean when we're talking about independence of the fingers? Well, we want each finger to be able to work on its own, to play on its own, or to play in concert with any other finger or any other combination of fingers equally well. So that all your fingers should be matching in speed, in volume, and in tone. And when each finger can do that, no matter whether it's playing by itself or with another finger, then you have independence of your fingers. And think about what this means, right? Your fingers are matching in speed, volume, and tone. So this is how you get beautiful, fast, fluid scales and arpeggios. It's how you get really even and equal chords. And it's not just playing four notes in a row and having them all sound the same. Sometimes it's rolling a chord and having all the notes be nice and even and not, you know, jerky rhythmically or uneven in terms of sound or volume. Not an extra accent on the top unless you want it or an extra accent on the bottom unless you want it. And of course, it also means being able to play all those notes at the same time so that when you want those notes to sound exactly together, they are together and not just kind of together. So having your fingers fire when you, when you want them to, right, and play exactly the way you want, that's true independence. Okay, so how do we get that? Well, we get that from a variety of drills. One of my favorite drills, which just helps work the individuality of each finger as well as its connection to the other fingers, is that infamous or famous place and hold exercise where you put all four fingers on adjacent strings and you play one finger at a time. This is a great way to check your technique, to make sure that you're doing everything just the way you want. Hold lightly with your other fingers. Don't, you know, no death grip on the strings, no white knuckles. Just holding it on, no. Fourth fingers, not so difficult. Third finger, however, a little bit more of a challenge, right? It's on a shared tendon and it doesn't want maybe to close all the way. Don't hurt yourself, right? But do the best you can to give your finger the same motion and the same sound that your other fingers get. Second finger will be a little bit easier. And your thumb as you close that over. Remember that your thumb isn't just this, this funny top joint, right? It's not even these top two joints. It's all the way back to here. Your thumb has the same length as your fingers. So be sure to use your whole thumb so that you get the entire sound that you can from your thumb, okay? So the place and hold exercise is a great way to start by checking your fingers to make sure that they all are working evenly. And then, well, you probably know what comes next, right? Scales and arpeggios, sure, why not? They're, that's what they're for. And of course, those wonderful pattern exercises. Things that you'll find, well, lots and lots of books use pattern exercises. Um, I'm a big fan of the Salzedo conditioning exercises, but uh, the Deborah Friu books or um, La Riviere exercises and etudes, anything that uses finger patterns to make your fingers move in different orders or in different combinations, right? So that they really develop the ability to play, to work together nicely. We play nicely with others, what a, what a thought. Okay, so that's your independence of the fingers. Now, how do you wanna work at them? Well, whatever exercise you wanna work on, whatever pattern you're gonna play, there are a couple things to do, and this works whether you're doing the place and hold or a more elaborate exercise. These are the things you really want to pay attention to. First of all, be sure that you're relaxed. The tenser you are, 
the harder it's going to be to do anything. And of course, it's not good for you anyway. You want to teach your body and your fingers and your hand and your arm and all that good, every part, to be relaxed. So be sure that you are relaxed and don't let yourself tense up as you play. If you find that it's happening, just shake it out and continue. All right, so start by being relaxed. Then play slowly and pretty softly. If your fingers aren't used to a particular exercise, don't make them do their very hardest work right now. That will only make you tense for one thing. Be gentle with them. Train them correctly by going slowly and by playing fairly softly. I mean, use tone. Don't just whisper over the strings unless for some reason you absolutely need to. But just, you know, a nice mezzo piano, mezzo forte is all you need for this. Then something very important. Be sure that you are supporting your hand properly, that you're keeping your arm and your wrist steady. Every time your wrist moves in and out, or any time your arm changes angle, you change the angle of your finger on the string, right? If my hand starts playing like this, and then I do this, all of a sudden I'm playing on a different part of my finger from what I had intended to play on. Now, your technique, your method that you use might be different from mine, but the principle here is the same. If you change the angle of your arm and your wrist as you play, you're going to be compromising the, your finger's ability to match the other fingers because it's going to be changing the way it plays on the string as you change the angle. So you want to maintain a constant angle, whatever that happens to be for your particular method. So that when you play your fingers here, your arm is supporting what you want to do and holding steady so that your fingers can do their job. Okay, so maintaining that steady support is going to be important. And then use a full finger motion, right? If you just kind of cheat and you play really, really with just a little part of your finger and not much motion, you're not going to A, get a lot of sound, but you're also not really training your fingers to do what you need them to do. So play the way you want to play eventually. Use a, fing a full finger motion and let your fingers get used to doing what you want them to do so that they can do it evenly. And the last important point here is to listen. You need to really, really listen to make sure that the sound is matching. Pay attention. These aren't exercises that you can you know, sleep through. You need to be involved and pay attention to what you're doing, not just how it looks, which is important too, right? You're gonna be observing what your arm is doing, what your fingers are doing, but you're gonna be observing with your ears what the result is. Do those notes really sound even? Does one finger sound extra loud or extra soft? So be sure that you're listening to the results. Okay, so those are the five things that I want you to remember while you're working here. Be relaxed. Play these kinds of exercises slowly and softly. Keep your support for your hand steady, a steady arm and rest. Use a full finger motion and remember to listen. Now, having said all those things, I want to give you one special tip. My students who work on the conditioning exercises often get stymied at conditioning exercise number five. And it's such a useful coordination. And maybe this has happened to you, if not on that conditioning exercise in another piece where you needed to use this, to play two and four at the same time, and then one and three. Now the conditioning exercise has you go back and forth like this but you'll find that this is a very useful kind of technique in lots of real music. And of course, that's why it's in most exercise books. But it's a real tricky one to get those two fingers to fire without these two fingers moving, right? So here's how you want to work at that. If that's the kind of thing that's been giving you trouble and you can't get two and four to play at the same time without having one and three spaz out on the strings, this is how you're gonna try that. So start by playing your fourth finger and then your second finger. We know we want them to play together eventually, but for right now, just do that, okay? Four and then two. Then replace them and play three and one the same way. Three and then one. Now go back and forth. Four, two, replace, three, one. 
replace, 4, 2, replace, 3, 1, replace, 4, 2, replace, 3, 1, replace. See if you can speed it up so that... Now, you can't cheat by playing those 2 and 4 without 1 and 3 being on the string. That's cheating. Right? All four fingers need to be on the strings before you play them. And you'll, you'll play them in this kind of rolled fashion until finally you don't need to roll them anymore and they play at the same time. As you're working on this, remember to stay relaxed and as a way to help yourself stay relaxed, you might incorporate a gradual diminuendo so that the, the more effort you put at this, the softer you get so that you don't wear yourself out. So, pay attention. If you're listening, you'll notice that all of a sudden you've gotten fortissimo as you try to <laughs> make this happen, because making it happen won't work. Be very gentle, and let yourself stagger those notes until you can actually do them together. Once you can do this, you are so far on the road to independence, there's no looking back. All right? That's a quick take on independence of the fingers.